Hey guys, what's up? I just came in from recording a podcast and we have had a bluebird uh, running into this window all day. I have no idea why it's not done it before. I know that there is a nest of bluebirds in the birdhouse directly across from the window. But for whatever reason, today this bluebird has been running into this window all day. I went out there, I tried to see what was going on. I cannot figure out why. We tried to like shoo him away, he just keeps coming back. And he's driving my cats up the wall and I was just outside recording a podcast and I came back in to this nonsense. So today I am trying to get lots of content done. I don't know if this is gonna make it. Ugh, okay. I think it's probably salvageable. I've got some roots here. This is a alocasia, I think. I'm probably gonna just take it out to the greenhouse and see if I can put it in a pot out there. So I'm actually leaving tomorrow um, to go to Arkansas, taking Jackson and Asher there to visit their dad um, for the summer and I'm picking up my cousin Amy to go with me to the Homesteading Festival at Rory Feeks, south of Nashville. There's so much dirt in my sink right now. It's not great. But my whole day today was making content. That was my plan. Uh, because I'm getting ready to go out of town and it makes a really big difference to have content uploaded regularly. People are always like, oh, you could take off, but it, would, it was honestly just cost me a lot over time because the algorithm re rewards regular posting. So that's why typically when I go out of town, I will have content uploading regularly while I'm gone. Some of that is for safety. If we're gonna be gone and we don't have necessarily somebody staying here, oh, poor break plant. Part of that's for safety. Obviously, I don't like to advertise whenever uh, we're not going to be at our house. When we are going places that we're not going to be at our house, and it's obviously public that we're not at our house, we always have somebody come and stay with the house to <laughs> make sure everything is safe. But anyway, my whole day has been making content to come up regularly while I'm gone. Which is why you're seeing me clean my cat's mess out of my sink. <laughs> Uh, because I came in here getting ready to shoot a vlog. So you get real life for the vlog. <laughs> I got all the dirt out. Now I am uh, gonna sprinkle some baking soda all over here and pour a little um, white vinegar on it and then let it sit. I'm gonna go outside and then I'll scrub this. The dirt didn't really make that big of a mess. I mean, I was able to scoop it all out and wipe it out. Just in the process, I realized how dirty my sink was. <laughs> All right, baking soda, white vinegar. And I'll show you how well this works. It works better if you leave it to sit for a while though, so I'm gonna do that. Part of me is like, don't show your nasty sink on YouTube, but I never said I was any good at housekeeping. That garden though. Look at the clouds. It's pretty cool. So this weekend is the homesteading festival. I've already shot multiple videos to go up while I'm gone because I am going to Arkansas first and then I'm going to Nashville and then I'm actually going down to Florence, Alabama and then I'm going to Knoxville. <laughs> I'm going all over the place. Uh, it's going to be a really, really hectic week with lots of travel and knocking a lot of appointments and things off the list. But I'm super excited to get to spend time with many of you at the Homesteading Festival. I went to, this is an event put on by Rory Fee. It's called the Homesteading Festival at Hardison Mill. I loved it so much last year. I went by myself last year that this year I wanted to bring like a whole team. So we have a tent for the Carolina Homestead Exchange with McMurray Hatchery. We have like a joint tent with them. And that's where we're gonna be hanging out most of the time if you are coming and you're planning on wanting to meet us, that's where we'll be. But uh, Will's actually coming up with Taylor and Daniel's gonna come up. Cousin Amy's coming with me. My friend Lee is flying in. So it's gonna be really awesome and I'm super pumped for it. Uh, but going out of town, it's hard. Even now that we have like an amazing community, we actually 
can leave and know that our farm is kept and safe and protected. Um, it's still, it's just hard to go. Oh, look at this. That's awesome. These are my wild boar farms, uh, blueberries, tomatoes. Look at those. Fantastic. We got that one ripe tomato and I haven't gotten any since then. These are called midnight snack. Oh, fooey, I didn't mean to do that. Um, lots of anthocyanins on that variety as well. It's hard to leave the garden this time of year because it's just so darn beautiful and lush and changing every minute. So I actually moved my green stalks out from under the edge of this because I wanted them to be able to catch more rainwater. But yeah, look at my dwarf tomato plants. They're looking really nice. Some of them are really starting to get big. Got some little baby tomatoes on these. I had the goal the last few days to get everything completely planted out in the garden uh, and then it rained <laughs> incessantly all weekend. It just stopped today. So I've actually done a bit out here today, but I'm just gonna do everything I can and then leave a list with Will, then he's gonna go out of town too. So it'll just be what it is. I just brought out a bag of okra seeds. This was given to me. I went a couple of weeks ago, Maya and I went down to Covington, Georgia to some friends of ours have a church down there and they invited us to come speak. And we went and spoke, talking about homesteading stuff. And one of the guys there brought us these okra seeds and he said his family has been growing this variety of okra on their family farm for like 50 years in that general vicinity. So I'm gonna plant some of these cause I think it should do well here. I have no idea what the characteristics of this okra are, but I'm just flying by the seat of my pants here. Also have some butternut squash and some watermelon seeds that I wanna put in the in-ground garden. I just didn't plant them while it was raining because the way we designed that garden to hold water meant that it was really sloshy while it was raining. It was working. I ran into a garden bed and scraped my leg. Occupational hazard, I guess. I'm gonna plant down here and try to keep Bear near me because I don't want him messing with the killdeer nest, so I might holler at him a few times during this process. Man, the okra is just getting riddled by pests. Um, as you can see here, it's full of holes, but got a couple of volunteer sunflowers. I'm gonna plant more okra. A lot of times when things come up, the pest pressure is really bad. And it's like stuff will have a whole bunch of holes in it when it's really small. And I, I actually don't usually do anything about that. Usually it gets past it and then it evens out and it's fine. Obviously, if it were actually killing the little plants, I would maybe intervene with some sort of organic pest control, but I usually don't need to do that. Usually, even though things might be very riddled on the early ends, they just grow new leaves and they're okay. All right, I planted okra. I planted some more summer squash. Well, little killdeer mom is luring us away from her nest. All right, so I've got all of these horseshoe mounds to plant and I'm gonna be doing largely watermelons but also some squashes. I have some orange glow watermelons, some desert king watermelons, both of which are ones that grow well in hot climates like mine. Um, I'm not gonna plant every space with these uh, because uh, and I have, I know Will has some seeds that Dr. Kibler gave him for a local heirloom and I was also wanting to plant just like a good classic red watermelon but I need to go through my seeds inside. I'm just gonna get what I can planted now and then I'll leave a note for Will so he can finish up. We're trying to get as much planted as we can before we go out of town because the sooner you put the seeds in the ground, the sooner you get food. So I wanna get it done. I don't wanna put it off for another week and a half. Um, so I'm gonna start planting. I'm sinking a little bit. The way we designed this was to hold water, which is great, it's doing that, but uh, after so much rain, it makes it kind of difficult to navigate. So, time lapse for you.
So I'm just walking through here planting all of these watermelons. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I just planted 18 watermelon mounds and that's not even half of the space. So these horseshoe mounds are like, I mean, if you laid them out flat, that would be like six feet. Um, so I put like one plant here, one here, and one there in each one of them. And uh, with that many plants in each one, it should fill out the space pretty well. And this is a new thing we're trying, so we'll see how it, how it works. This layout definitely did work effectively to hold water. So it rained all day, all weekend. Today it did not rain at all, but you can see there's still standing water in the rows, which is good to see, means that it's working. Um, I'm very eager to see what I come back to in this space. I think it'll be definitely more substantial plants. These cool days have meant for kind of a slow start on some of them, but we'll see. Never in my life have I tired of planting until this year. Um, normally I'm just so jazzed after the gray winter to get out and start planting that I have just endless energy for it, but this year just this garden is really large and so we've spent just countless hours putting it in and uh we're, we're getting towards the end of of it being largely done for now i mean we're gonna succession so all through the season so there's gonna be a lot more planting <laughs> just... had you told me a few years ago that i would i would get tired of planting the garden i would be like there's no way it only took forty thousand square feet to do it for me I mean, obviously for a lot of people who are growing on a really large scale, they have like tools for planting big fields and stuff like that. And we're planting everything by hand because we're still technically on like a homestead scale, even though this is a very large garden because we're doing all the different gardening methods that showcase gardening methods for the sake of teaching. Um, they really need to be planted by hand. You can't bring equipment in and plant them. So I did this whole row last night in the drizzly rain, um, but I ran out of eggs down here. So I've got some that I can finish planting my last four plants on this row. I am so eager uh, to do my first garden tour when I get back from being in Tennessee. because so I'm gonna be gone for seven days with everywhere I have to be gone. And seven days during June in a southern garden, it's a long time. That's like several inches of growth. That's ripe fruit. A lot can change in a week in a southern garden. All right, I had to grab a little spade. My friend Miss Nina brought me some plants and that's what these are. Um, plugged in several things here. I, I need to finish this end of the cottage garden. I feel like it's a little lackluster, but you know, we'll get there. Oh, and look at this. I can't believe I forgot to show you guys this. I got some black hollyhocks. Look at that little happy bee. So the hollyhocks get real rusty here in South Carolina. And these are all laid over. They're not quite as majestic as I've experienced them before, but I was sure excited to see them. Look at that. Oh, the comfrey's going wild back here too. Probably by the time I get back, that'll be ready to to chop some of it and start fermenting it for some nutrition for the garden. All right. So my plants look fairly puny. These are the ones that got stunted, but the ones I have planted out already have just started making a really quick comeback. So I'm not too worried about it. Uh, these are Black Beauties Wild Boar Farms, and these are Super San Marzanos, and that's what I'm going to put in these four spaces. Okay, little creeper, you watching me? Do you approve? You sign off on my work? He's like, I just want to eat eggs. I actually really need to plant this last row of tomatoes, and I really don't want to, but I'm just gonna suck it up and do it. I'm leaving like in the wee hours in the morning. 
just me and the older boys. And in this moment, the thought of coming home to tomato plants that are several inches taller than they were when I left is fueling me. And I'm gonna plant these. In order to do that, I'm actually gonna need more eggs. And we're just gonna go get them out of the chicken coop because with all the rain and the mud, the eggs are really dirty. And I'd rather just use those for planting rather than using the clean eggs that we've already gathered. Cause they'll be good for weeks and we can just eat those and not have to scrub mess off of them. Stay back. Hey ladies and gent. Back up. I don't have anything. This broody situation is serious. Go on, girl. Go on, girl. Thanks for the eggs. Well, they're cleaner than I expected, but we're still going to use them for planting. Excuse me, ladies. All right. Eggs. All right, I'm gonna dig the holes first and then I will come turn the camera back on and tell you what plants I'm putting in. Um, I only have so much battery, so I'll catch you after the holes are dug. 10 minutes later, 30 holes dug, good deep holes here in this bed. About, I don't know, 18-ish inches apart. Some of them are probably a little further, some are probably a little closer. This bed's 48 feet, so that math works out more or less. So I need 30 plants. I'm gonna do about half of these as cherry tomatoes. I already have one short row of cherry tomatoes over there. So I'm probably gonna be swimming in them, but um, I have more varieties that I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those in and then the rest, larger tomatoes that I can use for preserving. Okay, first I'm gonna go down and drop an egg in each hole. And when I get to the end, I will use my shovel to break the egg. I'm just gonna go down and list these off. Um, these plants look really rough, but it's okay. They'll they'll bounce back once they're in good soil. Um, I've got blue boarberries. A lot of these I have in other places of the garden, so this is just like repeats. Atomic grapes, gotta put some of those in for Malia. Gold Rush currants, uh, sun gold, berries crazy cherry, sunrise bumblebee. I've got a few more Dr. Witchies here, even though I have like 10 other plants in the garden, but I didn't do just a ton of experimental varieties this year. Uh, because I haven't had a good tomato year in the last couple years, I grew a lot of my favorites because I really wanted to enjoy them. So more Dr. Witchies. I do have Julia Child. That is a new variety to me. I don't know if the tomato will be good. Julia Child is just one of my favorite people that's ever walked the earth and so I'm excited to have that. Pink Berkeley tie-dye, big rainbow, um, pineapple, large barred boar, Thornburn's terracotta. So this whole row is stuff that I have some plants and other parts of the garden. They're just favorites. Plus that one, literally Julia Child's the only new to be variety on this row. I'm gonna go down and plant these, which is essentially gonna look like putting these plants in. I'll put the tag to the side. I'll put the plant in nice and deep, pull off any um, branches that are kind of close to soil level, and then I'll come back and fill each hole with compost. Now I've got my bucket of compost. And I'm just going to come and cover these up. One scoop of that is pretty good. Um, and then I'll close the soil in around them all the way down. Now that I'm on this side of doing this task, I'm really glad I did it. <laughs> it's kind of the nature of these things. I was thinking, oh, I could go pack, I could take a shower, I could be ready to go early, get to sleep early, but I probably wouldn't have gotten to sleep early. I probably would have got it wrapped up. Um, and something inside and now I'll get to go on my trip knowing my tomatoes are happily growing at home All right, 
Well, now I'm feeling accomplished and glad. <laughs> Oh man, my kids are almost home. Jeremiah took them to the lake this afternoon uh, to have fun, go swimming out there. He wanted to take the teenagers for a fun bit of QT quality time before they headed to Arkansas for the next handful of weeks. So I filmed a sign off outside and then I came inside and remembered I was going to show you guys how well um, baking soda and vinegar can clean up messes. See here? Now this comes off super easy. So if you have anything stained like this, just let it soak with baking soda and vinegar. This was out here for, I don't know how long I was out there, like an hour and a half or something like that. Not only is that non-toxic, it's also cheap and better for everybody involved rather than things like bleach products. So anyway, thank you for hanging out with me today, <laughs> doing my super fun evening of getting ready to go. I feel better. I feel better having gotten that stuff done, so. And I shot a video, which also makes me feel better. For those of you that I'm going to meet this weekend, I look forward to meeting you. Please do come up and say hello. We'll be at our tent, the Carolina Homestead Exchange tent. Um, I don't know where that's located as far as the layout of the festival, but it's near Murray McMurray Hatchery. And I'm speaking, I think, the second day. The calendar is up on the, um, the event website. I'll be there the whole time, though, so we'll chat. Thank you, guys, for hanging out. I bless you. Until next time.